What's going on everyone? Austin John plays here and today I'm going to be going over how you're going to be getting the Sheikah Sensor, the Sheikah Sensor Plus, the Travel Medallion, a second and third Travel Medallion, and Hero's Path in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> All of the things that I said are probably buzzwords if you played Breath of the Wild, and while you were playing Tears of the Kingdom, you were probably walking around and you may have not realized it, but you don't have that little ding, 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 ding from the bottom right corner that happened all the time as soon as you started off Breath of the Wild after unlocking your first tower. In fact, you may have not realized it until I just said it out loud. Now just think about how many shrines you've been missing. And if you played the DLC and you have the Traveler Medallion, it was one of the best things ever. In fact, the only complaint was that there wasn't enough of them. Well, in this game, there's three of them. And then there's also Hero's Path, which... I guess is helpful. It's usually just something that people show on Reddit to show that they found all the Koroks without a guide. But honestly, I found some use for it when seeing which Sky Islands I have and haven't been to. But regardless, I'm going to be covering all that now. Now, as far as your prerequisites for this, you have to do one of the four races, one of the four parts of the map. You have to do their quest in order to unlock this. So if you followed the game and Mai's advice to go over to the Rito quest line and do all the stuff over there and you completed that and you got the ability related to that, then you're fine. I just completed the Rito quest line and unlocked Tullin the Sage of Wind and his ability which is hands down the best ability in the game. If you haven't done that, then I, I recommend it because it's, oh golly, your ability to get from one place to another just became like six times better. After completing one quarter of the regional phenomenon, at this point you should have already unlocked the camera ability and you had to have unlocked the auto build ability. Only if you have those two done, which by the way I made a video on how to do those two things, link in the top right corner, boop, then you're going to be able to do this. So back at Lookout Landing, Joshua has finally finished her giant sculpture thing on the wall of all of the different figures. If you do have the camera rune and she hasn't finished the thing on the wall, then something is wrong and maybe you gotta progress with the game more, but I've done this exact thing twice and it worked out just fine. Anyways, that's going to give the quest a mystery in the depths, which requires you to get auto build. And if you already have auto build, she's gonna be giving you a schema stone in order to see a hot air balloon. She's going to unchain Robbie's balloon and carriage, and then you're gonna have to go over there and use auto build. So from auto build, we're just gonna look at the hot air balloon. We're gonna choose the two pieces and we're gonna click, click build and it's done. She calls over to goggles, which is such a great name for him. And that is mystery in the depths complete. From here, now we're gonna go ahead and talk to Robbie. Robbie's gonna be so impressed that you fixed his balloon even though you could have done that already and you didn't need auto build to do it, theoretically, but anyways, he's now back in Nintendo Village. From Lookout Landing, you want to head to the southeast, past West Nakluda and Kakariko Village. There's going to be a pathway that brings you along through Fort Hateno, which there's a large enemy presence here, or you just walk around it. Make your way all the way to Hateno Village, which is right here, and at the very top of the hill is going to be the Research Tech Lab. There's a shrine in Hateno Village, the Zanmuk Shrine. I'm going to head over there and walk on up. Make your way to the top. You're going to be seeing Robbie's balloon over here, and the lights are on, and the chimney is going. A rainy welcome to you too, Robbie. And Robbie's going to be like, hey, why isn't your sensor on? I'm going to turn it on for you. Which I feel like he could have done that back at Lookout Landing, but you know, that's not my place to say. You now have the sensor all set up for tracking shrines of light. Next, all you have to do is walk slightly in the direction that's going to be active, just to show that you know how to use it. And then once you know how to use it, you have to make your way to the shrine outside, which is behind this rock wall. Inside of here, this is going to be the Retsam Forest Cave. There's going to be three different paths, one to outside, one to the shrine, and one is probably to our Booble Frog. Sure is. And here is the Maya Hissick Shrine. Now, some of these shrines that are underground are just going to be straight out blessing shrines, and they're just going to give you your light of blessing, including this one. I think this is a magic rod. Magic Scepter, that was it. Once you're all set here and you already got your Booble Frog, we're just going to ascend out and head right back into the lab. Robbie's gonna be so impressed that we found the shrine with the thing to find shrines with. So impressed that he's gonna put a poster on the wall on how to use it. But that's not all. 
Now, Robbie is gonna say that there's a whole bunch of extra features that you can unlock. For the travel medallion, he says that there's a prototype back at his old lab in Akala. So you're gonna have to go there and retrieve it. But he's gonna go ahead and make this a fast travel point. Thank you. Next up is the hero's path mode, and the hero's path is gonna be unlocked if you have data from 15 shrine locations. So as long as you've done 15 shrines and completed them, he's going to be unlocking Hero's Path for you. It will save around 256 hours of gameplay. If you've played more than 256 hours, then you're not going to have it all show up. <laughs> Next, if you ask about Sensor Plus, this is going to be unlocked if you have your compendium registered with at least five types of monsters. The good news is, on your way between Akala and the Akala Tech Lab, which is located right up here, you're probably gonna come across five monsters. I know that there is a horse staple I need to unlock here, and I'm gonna be going from the Ulri Mountain Skyview Tower. As Soon as you show up, there's already a Moblin we can take a picture of. He's a black Moblin, and a blue bow Coblin that we could take a picture of, and a shrine I need to mark down, and a wolf, Marauder Wolf, and a blue boss bow coblin. Well, thank you, Sensor, for letting me know that I was next to the shrine. Also, there's one in the distance. Oh yeah, that's the Rift Peninsula. There's always something going on over there. Even if you don't plan on doing a shrine, make sure you touch it, that way you get the fast travel point. There's a horse. You're gonna need a picture of that eventually. Apparently, I never got a photo of a blue bow coblin. And here's a fox. I don't know if the animals count as monsters. Honestly, I don't think they do. By the way, quick little pro tip. Whenever you see a well, always go in the well and explore it. There could be fairies, there could be there could be helpful materials, there could be so many things. Always check the wells. This one has fairies. Oh, and a shrine of blessing. As you make your way to the Akala lab, there's going to be a figure standing in front of these toads that have the Sheikah symbol, but they're upside down. If you know, you know. What is most likely definitely gonna be my fifth monster, the Arakuda. Now, as you could probably tell from all of the Yiga uh, <laughs> merch and banners everywhere, this is going to be a Yiga ambush, especially if you look through the hole. You could see there's literally Yiga foot soldiers inside. Can I take a photo of them? Does that count? Yeah, that counts. <laughs> Go ahead, interact with the door, even though for some reason it sounds like Sage, the creepy die guy. Okay. Sure. You're now going to be pinned up against a Yiga foot soldier and one of the higher ups. This battle may not be the easiest, so you might want to put down a save. Be sure to collect their yummy bananas and rupees that they drop. Anyways, yeah, let's go ahead inside. There's a person over here that you could speak to who obviously is a big fan of CC, and you're going to tell them that you're here to liberate them. And they're going to give you a PC Yiga armor. Nice. This is one out of the three. If you want to wait for my guide, cool, go for it. If you don't, uh, here's probably something that's going to tell you where you should be going. Also, great picture of Link. Like, real quality drawing of Link right there. Be sure to always get a photo of that. Oh, and this chest right here. This is actually what we came for. It's the Travel Medallion prototype. Some important information is missing. All we need to do is now head back to Robbie's lab. Now that we have the t Travel Medallion prototype, Robbie's going to be like, Hey, did you have that? I sure do. Robbie's gonna go ahead and give you a travel medallion. Now, here's the thing. If you have nine towers activated, you get a second travel medallion. And if you have all 15 activated, you get a total of three medallions. So just speak with him again. Here's our second travel medallion. And our third travel medallion. The fact that you could have three in this game is so amazing. Like, I remember reading like Reddit posts and forums and reviews and like those four hour let's talk about everything about the game sort of videos that are like, the travel medallion is so great, I wish there were more. Oh yeah, also, now that we took pictures of five monsters, now we're gonna get Sensor Plus. Sensor Plus is what's going to allow you to take a picture of something and then track that. Most likely you're going to use this for farming items specifically for either quests or armor upgrades or the other thing is going to be finding treasure chests. 
Alternatively, the compendium database is over here and you can go and you can purchase photographs from it. Now, if you're the type of person who doesn't like to take a lot of photographs in Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, you can choose to purchase the pictures from the compendium and each one costs 100 rupees and I'm pretty sure that there's 509 entries in the compendium of this game granted you already had to present five for this so now you're down you know 500 rupees good job on that but yeah you're gonna be looking at 50,000 rupees if you want to buy out the entire compendium in addition some of the compendium entries you're not able to buy until you encounter that type of enemy and you'll know more what i'm talking about once you encounter them in order to use travel medallions anytime you want from your key item screen you just choose place and now it's placed down and then if you want to go ahead and place another one you're more than welcome to and then while you're on this screen you could choose collect and it's going to show you your most recently placed travel medallion and you can go ahead and collect it from here and now you can repeat the process to collect your second third so on and so forth like that I haven't found a way while it's on the collect screen for you to choose the not most recent one. But you know, just like the regular game, if you wanted to, you could just open up your map and then select one of the two, highlight over it, collect medallion, yes. And as long as you're on a piece of ground or structure, basically everything other than like artificial rocks that feel like they're part of the ground, everything you can place a travel medallion on. It's going to be so, so helpful when you go to explore the rest of the Sky Islands. Because there are so many little things that, you know, it may not look big or far, but you figuring out a way to get from here to here, the thing you're not realizing is it's a 500 meter height difference. Yes, placing down a travel medallion is gonna be very helpful. In regard to Sensor Plus, while you're on the map screen, if you hit Y, you're able to pick from your compendium and you have a whole bunch of options here. I recommend the first thing you do is go take a picture of a chest and a rare ore deposit, since those are definitely things you're gonna be hunting for. And then lastly is the Hero's Path. While you're on the map, if you tap the Hero's Path button, you're gonna get to see exactly where you have traveled to already. Also, when you zoom in, some of the lines are lighter, some are darker. That means that it did happen, but not on this height plane. If you tap down, you'll notice how now this half of these two lines is darker and these two half are more faded. If I go up back up to the sky, clearly I was up here and then I went down in altitude. That also works with anywhere that you've traveled in the depths. You can see that I only did this tiny little bit that was required to get auto build, and that has been it so far. I think it's really funny seeing the location that I know that light routes are gonna be at and how it looks like I've traveled that way already because I did those shrines in the overworld. And then you can see all the places that I go to farm for resources. This was everywhere I went for the stealth armor. So it is helpful on keeping track of where you've been on where you plan to go. Oh wow, if you look at this cluster of doing one of the temples, that's crazy. Now that you've unlocked like a lot of the big things between that and the great fairy fountains, now we're just going to be rushing towards clothing, shrines, and Korok seeds. Probably clothing first. I'm working on a rupee farming method. It's still in the works. Soon as I'm confident with it, I'm going to be coming back at you with it. Well, guys, if you found this information helpful, do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up button down below. For more Tears of the Kingdom videos, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.